Hi everybody, I'm Joel Ort with Hobart Welding Products. Today we're going to be building a really cool project for you. It's a portable fire pit that you can build at home. Two machines I'm going to be using in the video here are the Hobart Handler 210 MVP and the Hobart Air Force 27i. Uh, both machines are rated for 3 8 7 inch thick material. A cool thing about both of these machines is they each have the MVP plug, which stands for multi-voltage, which allows you to plug the 120 or the 240 volt into each machine and allows you to take these machines anywhere you need to go to build your project. Uh, the materials that you're going to need for this are the, some 2x1 tubing, some 1x1 tubing, uh, inch and a half by eighth inch thick angle iron, and also a 4 foot by 4 foot sheet of 3 16 plate. So the first step in this project is going to be cut all the material. The material here is 3 16 plate and this machine is capable of 3 eighths of an inch for a rated cut. So I'm going to take the machine and maybe just set it just over half um, just to be sure. Just That's what I'm going to do. Um, my ground clamp is hooked up. My air is hooked up. Uh, we'll turn the machine on and cut. Um, another thing I do like to do though is I'm going to be making two straight lines here and to keep them straight you know, I have a lot of scrap metal around the shop. I'm going to probably take this piece of iron iron, lay it on here. You're going to find your gap between your line and the steel. And I'm going to take a couple clamps. We'll clamp this down and I can use that as a guide and I'll get a nice clean straight cut on all my pieces so they'll fit up real nice when I go to weld them. Okay, so we have the 3 16 plate cut for all those pieces. Uh, the next thing I did was I cut all my tubing and my angle iron to length. Um, so the next step is to take the four pieces that are gonna be used for the top, and I need to cut a 45 degree bevel in the top edge, leaving the side straight. Uh, so what we're gonna do is again, use the Hobart uh, Air Force 27i for that. And I'm also going to be using a piece of steel here as a guide again to keep that cut straight. And um, once we get this done, all four pieces are done, we'll wind up uh, getting those all put together and we're gonna weld up that top frame then. Okay, so we have all these corner pieces cut off at a 45 for framing up that top part. Um, the next thing I did do uh, on this 45 was I beveled all these edges because when, after I tack weld this frame together, what I like to do is make a nice long weld there and then I'll come down in the corners and I take a flap wheel on a grinder and I grind all that smooth and then by beveling that you get enough penetration that you've got material down in there so you don't lose any strength. So. Um, to get started, on frame, what I did here was I clamped, uh, start with the two pieces of material, make my first corner. Um, I clamped them down to the table and then I used a framing square to get these at 90 degrees. I know they're straight and square. And I will continue this process all the way around until it's um, tack welded and complete. Then I'm going to flip this over um, upright. Uh, I'll take my ruler, double check corner to corner and make sure I'm square before you finish weld it. And, uh, and from there, I'll take the flap wheel and this top section will be done. Now, before welding, I, I set my uh, Hobart Handler 210 MVP up. I have my gas hooked up. I've got 030 hard wire. There's a chart in here. And this is going to tell me, based off of my gas mixture, the 230 volts that I'm set up for, um, the wire 030 diameter, and then I go over to the gauge of the material I'm using tells me that I need to be set up at number four on the um, range here, which I am, and then 40 on the fine tune, so up here. So that's on four and 40, and we should be set to go. Just turn the machine on and we'll start welding. So I have the frame um, all tack welded together. The next thing I'm gonna do is measure corner to corner, make sure I'm square. Um, once I establish that I'm square, I'm going to come back and I'm going to weld the top of all of these corners here and then uh, come down the side and I'd like to take after that, um, for my own personal preference, take a flap wheel and I round this all off and make it look pretty for when the project is finished, but um, that'll be about it. Then once that's complete, this top frame will be done.
So we finished uh, welding our frame together. Everything is square. Uh, the next step that I'm going to do is uh, weld all the legs into place in the corners. Those will fit in. I'm coming to the inside of our framework here so that the uh, welds are all in here, hidden from the outside, give you a nice clean look. Um, you might be wondering, well, you know, why didn't he build the fire pit first and, and put that in here and weld it in? And uh, just my personal opinion here, I didn't want to do that first because whatever clamps I need to hold this in place, um, that pit would be in the way in each corner. So I'm going to do this first and then come back and, and we'll put the pit in. All right, so at this point, we have the frame together. Our four legs are tack welded into place. I did not fully weld them into place yet because there's going to be some decorative pieces um, going in between. I just wanted them in there for now. Um, so the next step is I'm going to take this uh, framework, set it aside, and I want to get going on the firebox. So in order to do that, I'm going to lay the bottom on my table, bring all four pieces up, and we'll start getting them in, into place. And uh, for this, you're probably going to want an assistant. These get kind of heavy and clumsy, and you're going to need, you know, I'm going to probably hold two of them together to start with, to tack weld that up, and then keep going around one by one. and make sure everything's square before doing any finish welding. But uh, for this, you're probably gonna want a little bit of help. So we have the firebox pretty much set up right now. There's a little more welding to do. Once I complete that, um, we would like to marry the firebox to the frame that we built earlier. So I'll take that frame, set it on the table upside down, and then I'm going to set the firebox inside and then we'll weld that around to the frame. All right, so we have the firebox attached to the frame now. Our next step is going to be to build the sides that'll dress this fire pit up a little bit. I'm gonna build uh, something kind of like what you can see here with this tubing. There'll be the one inch piece of tubing running horizontally. I'm gonna do three pieces of the two by one. And then um, once these four panels are put together, each one will go on the side, if you can kind of envision that, on the side of the fire pit all the way around. And after that, this project will be finished. All right, so we got our side pieces welded together. We're down to the final step of this project. So um, what I did was put the fire pit back up on the table. I turned it on its side so that I can take these assembled pieces. I can lay them in here. And then what I'm going to do is measure from the bottom of the leg to the bottom of this tubing. Um, get all four of these sides the same, weld them in, and this project is finished. Okay, so this project is finished. Um, you know, there's a couple things that I did here. One of them was I beefed up the firebox with that 3 16 material. That's mainly just so it'll last longer. You buy the, the, whole, the store bought uh, fire pits and they're made out of the thin sheet metal. They'd only last a year or two. So that's the reason I did that. And you know, with all of these videos, the biggest thing is take this basic idea, um, and just build something yourself, make it your own. Change it up, you don't have to do exactly what we did here. You could, um, you could make the top of this wider and you could put some ceramic tiles around it that maybe color coordinate with your deck. You could change the sides here instead of just doing the vertical pieces like I did, you know, decorate it up. Maybe you plasma cut some sheet metal pieces, put them in there, make your own designs, you know, whatever. Make, make this project your own. That's the, that's the main thing. So for this project and others like it, visit hobartwelders.com.